As the Nats lost another tough game last night, you got to start thinking about this. What is going on with the bullpen? And more importantly, what is going on with Hunter Harvey? You are Locked On Nationals, your daily Washington Nationals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you all for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every single day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. And of course, you can catch us over on Twitter at RyanClary11 and as well as our show page at LO underscore Nationals. For all your latest Nationals news and notes, make sure to check us out over on Twitter. And of course, while you're at it, make sure to search Locked On Nationals wherever you get your podcasts, including over on YouTube. Again, just search Locked On Nationals there, and that is where you'll find your daily coverage of the Washington Nationals. So, of course, later on in today's show, it says a Game 2 preview if you're over on YouTube. But, of course, it is a Game 3 preview as it is Wednesday, third day of this series. And, of course, it is the third game for James Wood and the Nationals and really one of the best prospects in all of baseball at this point. Will James Wood hit a home run tonight? We'll have that discussion in the later on of today's show. But second segment, there is some bad news on Josiah Gray. If you haven't heard, Josiah Gray, it's not good right now. We'll have that discussion in the second segment and what could be next for the Nationals All-Star from back in 2023. We'll have that for you a little bit later on in today's show. But we start off with discussing DJ Hers in last night's performance. There is good and there's bad. The good is DJ Hers. He continues to be impressive so far in 2024. Really what his rookie campaign is, but still the Nationals, They have a problem. His name is Hunter Harvey. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use code all lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. And now we get back into it as the Nationals yesterday and again in back to back nights against this New York Mets team. They lost in extra innings. You go into the 10th inning, you're Vibes are pretty high. You have James Wood making his debut on Monday night in game one of this series. So, of course, everyone's kind of wishful thinking. And really, it seemed like the dream scenario where James Wood maybe could come up and hit a walk-off or whatever it is. That's at least what's running through your mind at some point over these last two nights. But what has happened is that Hunter Harvey has come in both these games and has simply just crapped the bed. That's the nicest way to put it. And this has been a pretty big surprise, in my opinion, because again, Hunter Harvey, and we will talk about DJ Hers, because in my opinion, he's been very impressive so far through his rookie campaign here. But over his last three and a third innings pitch for Hunter Harvey, he has now allowed eight earned runs, 10 runs in total, by the way, seven hits and two home runs. Yesterday, he had the blown save. And then two games ago on Monday night, he had the loss in extra innings where he just completely blew up in which you don't really expect that. But here's the thing with Hunter Harvey, and this is kind of what we got talking about in last week's Locked On Nationals a lot of the time. Hunter Harvey should only pitch in the eighth inning. Like, you think I'm being a little bit cynical, maybe. You may think I'm kind of joking, kind of taking this out of context, but if you look at what Hunter Harvey and really kind of what he has done so far this season, Hunter Harvey has been best in that setup man role. Now, again, in yesterday's game, yeah, it's I understand why Davey Martinez does put him out for the later on in the portion of the game. And then, of course, on Monday night in the 10th inning, Hunter Harvey is your second best bullpen guy at this point. At least that's what we thought. Dylan Floro, in my opinion, probably is your second best bullpen arm. That's the guy. Other than that, it's Kyle Finnegan as our closer, in which you know he's been great. And you know you can rely on him getting the save and doing his job. That's what he's done all season long, and that's what he's done since dating back to last year. But now with Hunter Harvey, someone who else that you could rely on, he hasn't really done too much here recently. And by the way, can this come at a worse time for him? Think about it this way. Hunter Harvey is going to be a hot name in this year's trade market. He is. He's going to be up there with Kyle Finnegan in trade discussions, as he should be, by the way. 
He's 29 years old. He's on our team control for another year or two. And Hunter Harvey has been good. But now, you see the inflated ERA what's back up in the fours. He has not been that bad this year. And I think teams will probably look past that, but still, it would be nice to have him sell him at a 3-2 ERA. It'd be nice to be a sub-3 ERA, even, right around where Kyle Finnegan is, around a 2 ERA, or Dylan Floro in that ballpark. But now Hunter Harvey is going out there and just completely getting shelled. And, and at this point in time, you have to kind of wonder to yourself, how long is this going to last? How long is Davey Martinez going to continue to throw him out there in non-inning scenarios? Because again, with Hunter Harvey, he's good. You know you can rely on him. But in this situation that we're in right now, he has now had three pretty bad outings here recently. Hunter Harvey has not been himself whatsoever. And Davey Martinez still goes knocking on that door, expecting a different response. And it just hasn't been that way. So I look at it this way. We all know that Davey Martinez, the one real big knock on him, in my opinion. There are a lot of knocks that you can say. I think Davey Martinez is a lot better manager, though, than what people give him credit for. I, I will say that right then and there. But his one knock that you just simply cannot look past is the way that he has handled the bullpen. Because they do have talent here. And I think we have seen a lot of different situations this year where the bullpen has played a lot better than or really pitched a lot better than probably what they should have. And again, you're missing some pieces right now. Like in the last few games, you're seeing Robert Garcia. He's also not doing well. Jordan Weems, who started the season well, has completely fallen off. You cannot rely on him in any situation. Tanner Rainey at this point is taking up one of the bullpen spots. You can't rely on him in any close game whatsoever. He comes in when you're down seven runs to come clean up and mop the floor. That's his job. So it has been a frustrating, a very frustrating few, few days here as a Nationals fan, seeing the bullpen come in, having good starts from Mackenzie Gore, and then last night with DJ Hurst, and then ultimately it just completely falls off from there. But it's not just the bullpen. The offense as well has been pretty damn putrid over these last few games. And it always happens against the Mets. It just always does. If you are playing the New York Mets at Nationals Park, the Nationals, they're going to lose. That's just the way that it is. And that is unfortunate because, again, they do have some nice pieces here. In my opinion, the Nationals, they're pretty damn good. They have been playing up subpar of expectations so far in 2024, but ultimately, it has not been all that great. And now you're starting to see it kind of stockpile a little bit here in the month of July. And ultimately, again, this bullpen, it blows right now. You know what doesn't blow? DJ Hers. Let's talk about him real quick. Last night's game, five and two-third innings pitch. Five hits, which was a solo home run, by the way. His one earned run in yesterday's game. Ten strikeouts and zero walks. Here's what I look at with DJ Hers. Number one. I've always said this, if you're striking out, guys, that tells me a lot about the stuff that you have. Again, DJ Hurst immediately entered this rotation. He's got the best changeup, in my opinion, in this rotation. It's not even close. He was a 70-grade changeup, one of the better ones down in the minor leagues, and that's what he was touted for. If you remember back last year, DJ Hurst completely turned a corner of his season when he was traded from the Cubs to the Nationals. And then this year in AAA, he really wasn't all that good. I have the numbers right here. DJ Hers in something that has always haunted him is his walks. If you look at his walks this year in AAA compared to what it was in the majors right now, he had seven walks per nine in AAA. Now jumping to the majors, he's only got three walks per nine innings. That is a huge, that you are cutting your walk rate by more than half at this point. What DJ Hers has done you can all just point to Sean Doolittle. I'll do that. I think that's an easy answer. And honestly, I think that probably is the answer. What DJ Hurst has done, though, has really solidified himself as a pretty premier arm in this rotation, in my opinion. He is now up there with Mitchell Parker, someone who also, from AAA going up into the majors, his walk rate is completely different. 
Now, Mitchell Parker has kind of, he's still really good, but he's kind of landed back on earth at this point. But if you look even beyond the numbers, though, Mitchell Parker and DJ Hers as left-handed pitchers, so when guys were walking a ton of batters over the last few seasons, they have completely flipped the script on them once they have entered the major leagues. You're starting to see them kind of take those next steps in which, in years past with this organization, you have not seen those steps. Like Jackson Rutledge, for example. A 2019 first round pick. He has not taken those steps. But you see it with Mitchell Parker. You see it with DJ Hers. And it's so weird if you consider it this way. But the way that they were pitching down in AAA compared to what they are doing up in the majors, they are so much better up in the bigs. You may be asking, what's the difference? The difference might just be right in front of us. His name is Sean Doolittle. Sean Doolittle. I've seen everybody talk about it. Every single time one of these young arms take the mound, we're all just like, pay Sean Doolittle whatever you want. At this point in time, I have to agree. At some point, though, maybe he could do the same with the bullpen, with Hunter Harvey. I don't know at this point. Because, again, the bullpen has been a complete disaster. But DJ Hers and Mitchell Parker, who starts tonight's game, they have been money up to this point. And you cannot ignore that fact of it. So thank you all for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every single day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. And of course, check us out over on YouTube. Just search Locked On Nationals there. And then that is where you'll find your daily content of the Washington Nationals. But next, let me tell you guys about Josiah Gray because he has got some bad news. What could be coming up next? What has David Martinez said about it? And really, just kind of open up the can of worms here. We all know what could be coming, unfortunately. Not saying nobody knows that at this point is way too early. But still, if if you watch and follow baseball the way that we all do here on Locked On Nationals, you probably know. It's not good. We'll have that discussion for you. But let me tell you guys about our friends over at Booking.com. And of course... This episode of Locked On Nationals is brought to you by Booking.com, Booking. Yeah, with travel summer heating up, especially travel for baseball games, it's time to explore those U.S. cities you always secretly wanted to learn more about. Yes, we're talking about your rivals' cities with hotels, bed and breakfast, vacation rentals, resorts, and so much more. A Booking.com, you might just find your perfect stay even in your baseball rivals' city. And of course, Maybe you're a Nats fan trying to head up to Chicago to see Wrigley Field for the first time this August. You can look over at our friends at Booking.com and find the best deals from hotels that look over stadiums to a family-friendly resort. Booking.com has so many choices across the U.S. for your summer travel this Major League Baseball season. And, of course, it is beyond all of that because you have our friends at Booking.com. Dot com. So the right stay can make you a fan of any U.S. city, even your rival. So book today on Booking.com on the site or in the Booking.com app. Again, the right stay can make you a fan of any city, even your rival. So book today on Booking.com on the site or in the Booking.com app. Now let me tell you guys about our very good friends over at Game Time. And guys, we talk about Game Time, but you may be asking, what is Game Time? Well, Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seats, and their lowest price guaranteed. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets. This is what I do when I'm walking up to Nationals Park. I pick the game, of course, like a tonight's game. If you're walking on Path Street, Open up game time, and this is what you do. You get to have two clicks. You have tickets in your hand, walking in the seat, and of course, you will be right there in front of the action. Some of my favorite views of Nationals Park, I get to see that on the app with game time because they have views from your seats, and of course, they have their lowest price guarantee and event cancellation protection, and as well, job loss protection as well. So take the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets with game time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N M L B for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. 
Later on in today's show, we'll have a preview of Mitchell Parker tonight against one of the rookies for the New York Mets who has been really good so far this season. We'll have that preview for you a little bit later on as it is a little bit of a rookie duel in tonight's ball game. But looking ahead, Josiah Gray, this is not good. It simply is not good. If you missed it in yesterday's game, before the game, David Martinez discussed Josiah Gray, he was asked about Josiah Gray and the setback of his rehab process. Davey Martinez basically is concerned. So here's what happened. Josiah Gray over the weekend was pitching in Rochester. And even then, if you kind of read the tea leaves a little bit, the Nationals have been rehabbing Josiah Gray for quite some time, a little bit longer than a lot of people anticipated. Now, you could kind of say they've been just kind of waiting for something to shake up in the rotation and have something open up. But even then, Josiah Gray is one of your premier arms. This is someone who's only had two starts all season. So the way that they were kind of rehabbing him was a little bit interesting, in my opinion. I think that kind of goes to show you that they may have known that something is not right. And even then, Josiah Gray, in yesterday's game, before the ball game, was talking and meeting with the media. He said that he felt elbow discomfort similar to what he felt in April and during Sunday's rehab start in Rochester, he will be getting an MRI. Then will plan his next step once he knows results. This is not good. Again, this is not good. Now, this is going to be a pretty not so good situation. I don't think anybody should be yelling Tommy John at this point in time. I think it's way too early. You simply do not know. But Davey Martinez did say that he is pretty concerned at this point in time. Davey Martinez was pretty concerned back in April when he first got shut down and when you first saw these issues. But if you watch baseball, which you do, you kind of know that something is a little bit different here. The fact that they are waiting a few weeks to get an MRI, that kind of goes to show you that they want to see if it can, if whatever this injury is, can kind of heal on its own, get the swelling down, and then go in there and see what's going on with it. Because we have seen this time and time again. This is an issue across Major League Baseball. Elbow issues and tricep issues, arm issues in general, shoulder issues, whatever it is, they are way up in baseball. Is it because the way that guys throw velo now? Is it the way that they stretch? We don't really know. There's no real science behind it at this point in time that can really kind of determine what the issue is. But the main thing about this is that your all-star from last year, who a lot of people are expecting a big step up, including myself this year, to be a middle-of-the-rotation guy who was going to be a kind of a leader in the clubhouse, which he still is, by the way. But this is just a pretty devastating blow to a good, young rotation at this point. Having Josiah Gray around, forget the pitching every five days part. This is a leader in the clubhouse. This is someone that you want young pitchers like DJ Hers and Mitchell Parker learning from. And again, a middle rotation guy who's going to help you down the line, who's going to be a big part of this rotation moving forward. He was your opening day starter. This is what it's like. And again, to think that his his velocity was down, he was getting rocked at AAA in his last start, all those things kind of point to not good situations right now now again i don't know what to expect with this because again this is all we know but at this moment in time it just does not seem like a good sign that you're working back from this injury and then again you now have that discomfort again and unfortunately he's getting shut down and it seems to be the same issue which it is this is a very disappointing development for josiah gray it's a disappointing development for the nationals And you just feel for the guy because, again, his leadership is way more than really what he has done on the field at this point. The Nationals are going to be missing that part of Josiah. And even then, looking kind of deeper into it, what he does off the field, the Youth Baseball Academy, being the ambassador for the Youth Baseball Academy in D.C. Josiah Gray means a lot to this community. He means a lot to this rotation. Being an all-star guy on and off the field, it is a big hurt for this Nationals team. And right now, it just does not seem to look all too good because, again, he hasn't pitched since early on in April. 
if it's the same injury again, you're looking at a lost season at this point. It sucks for Josiah. It sucks for the Nationals. It sucks for everybody around it. It sucks for the fans also. It's not good. Hopefully everything comes back and it's clear. And he can start rehabbing again and start throwing and work his way back up into the major leagues. But if it's anything, even just from this last injury that he's been getting back from, I mean, that's three months that we're looking at. It's July. So this could be a major blow for Josiah Gray, unfortunately, which is just awful to think about. So thank you all for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every single day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. And of course, check us out over on YouTube. Just search Locked On Nationals. That is where you'll find your daily coverage of the Washington Nationals. Next, let's preview game three of the series. The Mets, just, I hate the Mets. Just please do something. How about that? But we'll have that for you. But I said a lot of buts right now. Let me tell you guys about our friends over at Prize Picks. And guys, we talk about Prize Picks. You know what the drill is. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Prize Picks is also the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. And of course, if you look at this, you can win up to 100 times your money on prize with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000. And with the finals over, the hoops actually does stop on prize picks. Women's basketball is still heating up with stars like Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese looking to make names for themselves alongside greats like Brianna Stewart and, of course, others as well. You can win up to 100 times your cash watching them ball out. And, of course, download the prize picks app today and use code Locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the Prize Picks app today and use code Locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code Locked on MLB on Prize Picks for a deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. And now we get into it as we've got a little bit of a preview for you today as Christian Scott takes on Mitchell Parker and the Washington Nationals. So kind of looking into the start real quick, let's talk about it. Christian Scott, who, by the way, through his first five starts in Major League Baseball, he's got 27 and two-thirds innings pitch, 25 strikeouts, a 108 whip on this season as well. And again, that's only through his first five starts. This is someone who is a fifth-round pick back in 2021 out of the University of Florida. He is a 25-year-old. And really right now looks the part to be a pretty solid big league pitcher, which is a little bit unfortunate for the Nationals. Because again, we've kind of stumbled our way into some good arms. It fe feels like at this moment in time, the Mets have done that as well. So kind of looking deeper into it, over his last two starts have been his best outings, really. He's only allowed one walk over his last two starts, even just one walk per start over his last two. And even then, kind of looking at it, he's never had more than two walks in any of his outings so far. And looking at his first few starts, he had six strikeouts and six and two-thirds innings pitch. Then he had eight strikeouts in his next start against the Atlanta Braves. This is a pretty good pitcher. This is someone who's starting to come into his own. So with this national team and the way that they have struggled so far, you kind of think to yourself, could the Nationals be in a little bit of trouble here? Because that's kind of what I look at. But even then, kind of looking deeper into it, you've got Mitchell Parker on the mound today. Now, I know we always kind of joke that, like, when is the rubber going to meet the road for Mitchell Parker? He's been unbelievably good so far with a 3-3-2 ERA through his first 14 starts in the major leagues. They won one 2 whip on the 2024 campaign. But the way that this Mets team plays against the Nationals, especially at Nationals Park, gives you bad vibes right then and there, off the bat. You can't help but think about that. Going forward, though, maybe Mitchell Parker is just that guy. Maybe he just is that guy to beat the New York Mets because, again, it has been a tough go for it for this national team. And it's not because of what Mitchell Parker has done or what he hasn't done. But I can tell you this, Mitchell Parker has not pitched against the New York Mets yet. For whatever reason, when they are in D.C., they find a way to beat the Nationals. But James Wood, 
We haven't even mentioned him all show. Maybe hits his first home run in tonight's game. I will catch you guys on the flip side. If you do that, bet with our friends over at FanDuel. Give it a whirl just like I will in tonight's game. I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Have a good one. Go Nets.